Okay, everyone. So now let's try to talk about the Unity interface. So we do have the menu options. Uh, we do have here the toolbar that will be containing our access to our Unity account. We have the cloud services provided by Unity also. You'll see here we can manage our services here. We also have here the plastic SEM. We have our play, pause, and step buttons that is usually going to be available for us to access once we are in game view. Uh, usually we use this for playing our game, pausing our game, and we also have the step buttons in our game view here. We also have our history. So if you click that, that should be opening up our undo history here. And you can actually go and tab that, remove that, and then you can place that here if you wanted to. We also have our open search for us to be able to search the Unity uh, folders. Uh, we can try to look for folders or items, components, or scripts that we may have uh, so that we can easily find whatever we're trying to look for. And we also have here the layers that will be controlling which objects will appear in the scene view. So we have here, you would see we have default, transparency, ignore raycast, water, and UI. And we also have an option to change the arrangement of our views. And then save the new layout or load an existing from the layout drop-down menu here. So you would see we can save a layout, load from load layout from file. We have a 2x3 uh, option from where we have the different layout for our views here we have the split we can have it tall wide so it will be a lot easier for you to access your project files and uh, we have the game view we have the scene view and we can also save layout and we can reset all layouts if we wanted to as you can see here so this is what we call the hierarchy view that will be containing a text representation of every game object in our scene and each items in the scene has an entry in the hierarchy view so let's say we have a we can create an object here let's say for example i wanted to create an object so this is just an empty game object you will see we now have a new game object in our scene and it will be revealing the structure of how game objects will be attached to each other. If I wanted to create a 3D object here, cube, it will be in a parent game object. So uh, let's say we have another 3D object, which is a capsule. Let's say I want to move that a little bit. So now if I wanted to move this to pay, uh, the game object parent, I can move both rather than moving single object from the scene okay so you will see this that's why it's called hierarchy and if you right click on that you can have uh, some options here we can maximize we can also try to go and of course uh, minimize that back so you would see it displays our camera we can reposition our camera here we have the directional light and of course we have the concept of parenting so parenting is just a concept for Unity that allows us to have a parent-child hierarchies that will be able to group objects. And we can also try to inherit properties from the parent so that we can try to, let's say for example, I wanted to scale this. Let's see the two objects are being scaled over us trying to scale just a single object. Uh, we can try to scale two objects at the same time with the concept of parenting. We can target the parent object if we wanted to go and try to resize an object, a specific object. And as I've shown you, in the hierarchy view, you can also create a number of objects. And you can toggle the object visibility. You would see we are able to click on the leftmost area from where we can try to toggle the visibility of the parent. We can toggle the visibility of the child if we wanted to. We can also, let's say for example, I click here and create another object. 
let's say I'm going to go add a cylinder and this cylinder is not part of the parent game object that contains a cube the cup so we can also drag it inside that way so we can bring out a child if we wanted to or we can drag it inside of a parent object using the hierarchy view that we have here so we can also try to drag a scene inside of the hierarchy view so let me just go to the scene folder where i created a new scene and you would see we now have two scenes and we can toggle the pickability of that scene uh, let's say i would want to go and hide this scene we can do that uh, if you are in the hierarchy view here and one other thing that i just want to discuss here is that we can try to also set as a default parent let's say you would see now that it is in bold the default game object now is currently having the aesthetic of a bold text we can try to also remove this as a default parent by just clicking right clicking on the game object and then clear default parent you'll see it goes back to the normal text aesthetics we can also try to duplicate a game object by using ctrl d in windows and command d for mac os so let's say i would want to go and try to duplicate this cylinder i'm just going to press on my ctrl key and the d you'll see we now have a duplicated object inside of our hierarchy view now another thing that i just want to tackle here is uh, once we go to here we have the sample scene that was created when we created our project and i actually created a new scene here by going here uh, on the assets folder right clicking there and then creating a new scene right but another way to do that is to go to the hierarchy view click on the three dots here and you can see here we can create an empty game object we can add a 3d object effects light so rather than right clicking anywhere on the space on the hierarchy view we can also do that here and we can also save we can save scene as and we can add a new scene so you would see we now have a new scene we can try to rename that by right clicking or it doesn't have any or let's have uh, save scene as and go to the scene folder as scene 3 scene 3 that's how you will be able to rename the scene that you've just created the new scene that you've created while you're on the hierarchy view another part of the unity interface is what we call the game view and this is going to be rendered from the cameras in your application so we have camera here in our scene tree we also have a camera main camera in our sample scene here and it will be representing your final published application so this is going to be useful especially if you would be setting up multiple cameras from where you would want the player to see what is happening in your application we can use the toolbar post the the play post and the step buttons so that we can try to see what is happening in our game view so if we try to go here on our game tab here as you can see and again that can be added by uh, from the hierarchy view Again, we can try to remove that and close that tab and you would see here we have the game tab or this is the game view and once we try to play the play button here this will be changing or this will be allowing us to change certain properties or certain possible values that we have specified especially for a specific object like for example here in our cylinder if i try to go and scale this you would see that 
Uh, this is the inspector view. So we'll tackle more about the inspector view later on. But as you can see, we've done some changes. While we're in the play mode, if I try to pause this, that will stop whatever code we have uh, made. And if we stop this, this should revert back to the original scale of our cylinder that we selected on our hierarchy view. Now you would see here that we have the game view control bar that will contain some of the buttons and options that we can try to check out. So the first option is the game or simulator view that if we try to click and enable the game or simulator view, you would see that we have two options here. One is the game and the other one is simulator. So if we try to click on the simulator view, you would see here, it provided us some additional options. So perhaps we'll have a separate discussion about that. But let's first stick with the game view here that will be containing that the option to transition from game and simulator view. We also have the display here that will be choosing from a list of cameras. If you have multiple cameras in the scene that you have set up, this is set to display one by default. And another control here is the aspect. You would see we have here free aspect as the default value. And we would normally be setting this depending on how we would want our game to look on different monitors. And usually it's in default. Uh, we have the free aspect option here by default. And we normally sync this into 16 by 9 so that you would see it will be sticking to 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh, both in, you would see there, uh, in different devices. Because if we are in a free aspect ratio, you would see it changes whatever is being displayed in our camera here or in our game view here and again that's why we normally set this to 16 by 9 you would see the object that is on the game view is not getting resized when we are in 16 by 9 aspect ratio we also have here the scale slider that allows us to zoom in and examine areas and right now, I'm trying to click on my scroll mouse button. Once you try to hold down that, you will be able to move around the game view for you to check out the different areas in your game view or in our game. We can also try to go and play this. So you would see we have our play mode activated and we can also scale the slider for us to be able to examine what's, uh, what we can try to see on our game view mode. So you can use the scroller on your mouse button, the middle button scroller for you to resize the scale slider here. Now we can also see here play focused. We have play maximize and play unfocus. So we can try to click on play maximize for us to be able to view and hide all other views in our game view here. As you can see, we can now see it much better and we can try to do some play testing much better this way. And we can stop this now and let's go back to play focused. We also have an option to mute audio. If, for example, we're doing some play testing, we can mute audio and we also have the unity shortcuts here we can enable that disable that we also have the unity stats here that will be allowing us to have some of or view some of the rendering statistics if we we'll try to play this and then let's have this rendering statistics it's giving us some information about our applications audio and graphics this is really going to be useful for us to be able to monitor the performance of our application while we're in play mode. Another button that we can try to activate in the 
Unity Game View is the gizmo steer. You will see we can see the icon for the lighting once we try to click on it. And we also have access to the gizmo menu. So gizmos are graphics related or associated with the different game objects that we have in our scene. And some of the gizmos are only drawn when the game object is selected. Uh, there are also game objects or there are also other gizmos that are drawn by the editor regardless of which game objects are selected on our scene, on our hierarchy here. So I have to activate this. You'll see it's activating that icon. And you'll see when I try to transition to free aspect here, it's also showing us some lines on our objects. I'm able to see the capsule when I try to select it. We have the cube, we have the cylinder, we have the game object, we have the directional light. I think the camera, we can see it. But you would see it's activating. We're able to select specifically the capsule, the cylinder, and the cube, right? It's providing us a way to actively view that while we're in game view.